Hi, and welcome back. This is Amanda from Hook'em Creations, and today we are going to talk about the supplies for knitting. Like I've mentioned in my previous video, there is so much, uh, so much supplies out there for knitting. And for a beginning knitter, there, it can be very intimidating, I will admit to that, because when you walk through the store, uh, and you see all these different types of knitting needles. There's bamboo, there's plastic, there's metal, there's alum like th there's just so much. And as a beginning knitter, you don't know what to start with. And when I was seven years old, I just grabbed the knitting kit that Lion Brand and Boy put together and it and it worked for me. And for you, it may work. For others, it's you may be like, no, I'm gonna watch this and decide from there and go from there, which is totally fine. You can do what you wanna do. You're human, you make your decisions. So first things first, we're gonna talk about the knitting needles. When I first started knitting, I got two sets of needles that came with the kit and I actually still have them. Uh, this is one of the sets right here. Uh, it's a size 8 boy uh, knitting needles. I think these are about 8 or 10 inches long. And they have been with me everywhere. I've used these on so many projects. Like, they're, I, they're basically broken in as a knitter <laughs> in a way for knitting. They're basically broken in. I love it. I love them. They're great. I, if I can use them on every single project, I would. Unfortunately, I cannot. <laughs> so, they're great for um, practicing with swatches and stuff like that. So, um, so the most common of knitting needles are the ones that have the stops on the bottom, like these. And they're a little bit smaller, they're perfect for beginners, and that way you don't lose your uh, stitches through this so you don't lose your stitch for your stitches or anything like that and they're great to uh, work with uh, very, very easy peasy set of need knitting needles like if you're starting off I would recommend just do them the stops at the end of the knitting needles and just go from there the other set of knitting needles that I will point out that that is also very common to use are the, what's called the double pointed knitting needles. So there are points on both sides. Now these are great for making socks. Be why? Because you're going in around and the cables may be too long for making socks. So when you're making things that are a little bit smaller or you're starting to decrease on the cuff, some people work from the top of uh, top of the shoulder down, or they work at the uh, at the cuff at the sleeve, bottom of the sleeve, and work their way up. Um, when you get closer to the wrist, you will use double pointed needles um, for that uh, reason. I like double pointed needles because um, I make a lot of baby hats. I love making baby hats. They're so much fun especially when my friends are having babies or um, I made quite a few baby hats for my boys and they're super easy to make especially with uh, double pointed knitting needles and they're great and easy to, to use. Now as a beginning knitter because yes they are smaller needles and great for making little swatches when you start off uh, when you start off I do not recommend them right away. I still advise to stick with the knitting needles that have the stops on them so you don't drop any stitches. These are very easy to drop stitches. So wait until you get comfortable with actual knitting and then you can, I would, then I say go for it. The other thing, uh, people, who like to make sweaters and blankets, the bigger projects are with what's called the cable knitting needles. The cable knitting needles are 
this. So they're knitting needles with this big, that are connected with this big, long cable attaching the needles together. And I think this one, gosh, how long? I think this might be a 22 inch um, knitting needle. So when you measure the length, you go from tip to tip. And that's how you measure the length of your cable knitting needles. Now, these knitting needles have been with me forever as well. I've made uh, clothing items out of, the, out of these knitting needles. And they were my 4-H knitting needles. I was very big and in, involved in 4-H and knitting was one of my projects that I did. So uh, if you're getting into the bigger projects like sweaters and blankets, things like that, then the cable knitting needles come in handy. Now people like the cable knitting needles because that when you're done with a row, you can slide it onto the cables and you don't need any uh, stoppers to hold your stitches onto your needles. Some people like them just because of that and others like them for other reasons. And for me, I, I, I like circular knitting needles, especially when you're making um, hats, a uh, bigger hat, like my husband has a big head. He, I, he, everyone knows it. It's no big surprise. My husband has a really big head and circular knitting needles help with that. So uh, again, I actually have no objection with circular knitting needles for beginners. It may help, it may not. Um, but I still, just until you can get comfortable, I still say stick to these kind of knitting needles with the stops on the bottom. The other thing with circular knitting needles is some of them are what you call interchangeable. So you can buy cables and make them longer or shorter depending on the length of the cable. Sometimes you can even get a, um, uh, connectors to make uh, the cable even longer. So you add two cables together and you can make the cable even longer. And those are called interchangeable um, knitting needles and a lot of them come in kits. So they will look a lot like this. This one, I believe I bought this off of Amazon a while ago because I like the aluminum metal knitting needles. I'm not a fan of bamboo. Others are huge, crazy, gung-ho people about bamboo. They love them. They work well with uh, protein fibers and natural fibers rather than synthetic. And I work a lot with synthetic fibers, which is the acrylic, basically plastic. Um, and others are very big into uh, knitting with the protein or wool. Another... <laughs> protein fibers, which is animal fibers. So like wool, alpaca, things like that. And some people like cotton, which is uh, the, plant pro the plant fibers. And everyone has their choice and preference, and really you just gotta get into it to make a choice for yourself. Um, so some people are, they love their interchangeable. I like my interchangeable. Uh, cable knits they, they're great um, but to, but they are very very expensive and as a beginner I would advise to stay away from the interchangeable because sometimes they can unscrew and you can lose stitches that way so I again stick to as a beginner first starting off working on how to knit how to purl how to do all that stuff just stick to the basics, the basics of knitting, the basic knitting needles that you would get in the kits. So that's my personal opinion. Uh, you're welcome to try other things or do what is comfortable for you. Now, getting into other supplies. In knitting, to stop, if you're done for the day and you need to put, and you're afraid that your stitches are going to fall off of your knitting needles or you need to quickly um, put them in your bag and 
you're like halfway through a row. What I advise getting, I have quite a few of these, is get um, what's called stoppers, needle stoppers. So these are needle stoppers, one kind of them. There's a little hole on the bottom of them. You take your needle and your stopper and there you go. And then all your stitches stay on there. They're also great for like going through airports, um, especially if you're working on a project, stick some stoppers on your knitting needles and um, you're good to go. I have not, never had any problems flying with, need, with uh, knitting supplies and I will be making a video, a video later on about flying with knitting and crocheting uh, projects in a later date. So, so stoppers are great for that. Some of them even look like little witches hats, like this, little, little traffic cones. Um, another item, I'm not a huge fan of these. I mean, some people love them. I don't, I could kind of care less about it <laughs> in a way. Um, and that is, uh, they're called row counters. So as you can see here, you have this item and what you do is you quite literally take it and slide it onto your needles and it keeps count for you for however many rows. Now, most patterns say for knit until, do this stitch until you've hit this many centimeters or inches or millimeter, whatever the, whatever system they're using to measure um, their projects with. So, like I said, I'm not a fan of it. It doesn't work with like circular knitting needles or double pointed. It only works with the knitting needles that have the stoppers on the ends because you're just going back and forth, back and forth, back, back and forth. So I'm not a huge fan of them. They're not, a necess they're not necessary, but in case you need it, they're there. Not, not like an, oh my gosh, you need to have item, but they're there. The other item is uh, the stitch holder. So sometimes in a pattern you may see like, oh, okay, you need to slip these stitches onto a holder and uh, knit around them or something like that, whatever the pattern says. I was making a uh, little baby sweater, like a little wrap baby sweater thing and one of the patterns said uh, in that particular pattern it said to slip these stitches onto a um, holder onto a holder and this is basically what it is it's basically just a giant safety pin for knitting that's it you literally just slip the stitches on there and you close this up and then you just keep on going with your project. Um, they're great to have, not, again, depending on the project, depending on the pattern, you're most likely not needing this. Um, I have had to use it a couple times, a few times uh, for certain projects, but it is not an absolute necessary sometimes if you're working with like double pointed needles uh, you can just slip it onto a double pointed needle and it's fine but every to every knitter is different everyone is different um, one of the other items this is I think everyone should have one of these whether it's a one dollar item or you go get a metal one or what where every go get yourself a little gauge um, chart uh, a little gauge here so not only does it have a gauge right here where you can count how many rows high and rows long and it's only for like two inches like it, it's like a two inch block it tells you how many rows are in uh, two inches long and uh, wide but also you can 
see what size knitting needle you have because the metal knitting needles or the aluminum knitting needles like these do not have what size it, it they are on them you basically have to look and guess or you can take your gauge swap your little gauge tool and stick it in there like this is a size seven and i can say okay well that fit can i try oh nope this is a size six i'm sorry i lied the, this is a size six uh knitting needle right here and if, if i'm like okay well that fit in the six can it fit in the five no it doesn't fit in the five so this is a size us six knitting needle or a four and a quarter uh yeah four and a quarter millimeters if you want to use it that way so get yourself one of these these are helpful i have two of them the other one where did that one go oh it's right here this is my other one this is a little thicker uh gauge than this one this one i've had for over 20 years and it's still holding up other than it broke recently i move around a lot it, it happens so so get yourself one of those gauges the other thing and we sell quite a few of these in our shop and i will drop the link below so you can uh, look and see what we have is stitch markers we have multiple kinds of stitch markers in our shop uh, these are ones that are in my collection and they are they have lot there's the lobster claw kind and i like these for like uh crocheting because they're easy the other ones that are nice you can get the plastic ones that are just a ring just like that or i have like little jelly ones that <laughs> they're fun they're little jellies and uh can work on your knitting needles and they're they're squishy so those are nice to have and they work i have i also have like the big ginormous safety pin ones uh, they help count rows, they help find the cent each uh, point, like if you're working in Chevron, and those work wonders. So you know how many to increase and how many to decrease when you're doing things like, uh, doing projects like Chevron. So they're, they're very nice to have, I'm not gonna lie, they're very nice to have. Uh, I am a huge fan of stitch markers, I believe. You should always have stitch markers no matter what. The other uh, tool to have, if you get into cables, uh, doing some cable stitching, cables are a lot of fun to do, and there are two different tools that you can choose from when you start doing cable stitching in knitting. The first one looks like this, and this one came with my kit 20 years ago, a little over 20 years ago, I should say. This came in my kit all those many years ago and you quite literally slip the stitches on there and if you need to you can go to the short end or you can stay on the long end as you knit it back on there the other one i just got these recently and i have yet to test the, try them out but i'm excited to actually no i have used them i'm sorry i have used them but this is the other cable knitting needle i'm i know my light is blinding so this is the other cable knitting needle. So as you can see, they're fatter on the top here and then they get skinny. So that way when you slip the stitches on, they don't go anywhere. They don't slide on and off. And they come in multiple uh, sizes. So whatever you're working on or you, whatever yarn size you're using, um, these are very nice to have as well. This one's a little bit more universal they do have thicker ones, but um, it's, pr it's pretty universal for whatever size you're using. But these are, these are nice for when you're trying to match the knitting needle that you're using, uh, or as close to it, I should say. The other supplies that you will need is just yarn. Uh, I, again, when you're first starting out, I advise going with some yarn that you're not afraid can be I hate to say it but trash um, or if you want to uh, 
just because you're practicing and doing some swatches. Um, you can make easy pot holders or uh, washcloths just by doing practicing the stitch work. Um, you can use them. You can go get some cotton yarn and make some washcloths or coasters or whatever, and just practice knitting that way. Or you can go to the, your Dollar Tree or go to the dollar bin at your local yarn shop and just kind of practice with those uh, yarns, those fibers. Um, I, like I said, I am a big fan of synthetic fibers. However, I do enjoy knitting with uh, wool and other protein fibers and uh, plant-based fibers as well. They they're so much. They are a lot of fun. I. I really have no objection, but I have a lot more uh, acrylic yarn in my uh, stash than I do other yarn. <laughs> if, if you want to see more of our videos, be sure to hit the subscription button and ring the bell and get notified of when our next video comes out. Help us push this video out to more viewers just like yourself by liking and commenting below. If you want to help us continue making these videos, be sure to buy us some coffee. The link is in the description below. Until next time, happy crafting.